You know the W. Yahushua HaMashiach. I was given prophecy 118 in the month of February. February 19th, 2010. And the anointing got so stirred up in me as I had read something in regards to Elton John proclaiming to the world that homosexuality is not a sin because he says that Jesus Christ was gay. I read this and I started speaking in holy tongues and I could feel the anger of Abba Yahweh. But I apologize to you because this isn't released on February 19th, 2010. It is now June 27th, 2010. And I apologize to all of heaven because as a prophet, I admit I let my flesh No, not as a prophet. The prophet part didn't do this. It was the human part, the woman part, that delayed this word getting to you. Because this ministry is under such attack like has never, ever been before. A satanic network disguised as Christians. They're called the Unity Gathering. And it's a gathering, all right, but it's not of denominations. It's a gathering of five different forms of occult, people who are in the occult, who are attacking us, attacking me, attacking the holy prophecies, and um, they do it in the name of Jesus Christ. go into detail right now, but we're going to be putting more of this up to prove what I have said. But right now, before I can even release what has been spoken by Yahweh through me, I had to apologize to you. And I have to apologize to my beloved husband, Nico, because he said, this prophecy has to get up. And he said it month after month after month. And I just, I just said, haven't I been under enough persecution? You see, I'm stoned with words. Stephen was stoned with boulders. But words hurt too. They can't kill my flesh, but they're doing everything they can to kill my reputation as a holy woman and as a prophet. And so now I... I've offered up my apology. I'm not perfect. And as you will hear in this prophecy, I struggle with a sin, and it's called procrastination. And yet I know on this June 27th, which is the anniversary of four years since Michael the Archangel came to me in a restaurant in Camps Bay, South Africa, and my husband beheld his face also. And you could read about that on our website. But our constant prayer is, and we're asking you to stand in agreement, is that Abba Yahweh will send Michael the Archangel again to come to my defense, as he has done so many times before, to defeat the satanic network that is trying to destroy your almighty wind, a ministry that is used to bless you. In the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. Patina Narina Nakata Pacoto, Arena Mahi Narina Kata, Ipocoto Corona Marina Nakata Paki Narina Nakata Pocoto, Marana Narina Nakatona Nocoto. Enough is enough. Judas was only allowed to walk among the apostles for so long. He, too, could no longer play the game of a pretender. For there are believers and there are followers. It is not enough to say, I believe in Yahushua or Jesus. I believe there is a God in heaven called Yahweh. I believe there is a Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. The question is, do you follow us? It is not enough just to believe. I am exposing the hidden Judases. I am exposing those calling themselves Christians and are not. I am exposing who the bride of Satan is. Counterfeits are all around you. They battle my true bride. The bride of Yahushua Hamashiach is in war against the bride of Satan. You want to know who your most deadly enemy is? It is not the heathen who refuse to acknowledge my name. It is the church of the pretenders on this day. 
did is shout it to the world. Is this someone you would believe in one whose name is Elton John is raised up and proclaimed to all? I think Jesus was a compassionate, super intelligent gay man who understood human problems. On the cross, he forgave the people who crucified him. And Jesus wants us to be loving and forgiving. I don't know what makes people so cruel because the Bible says Jesus was without sin so that rules out homosexuality so it cannot be sin so says Elton John but I Yahweh have had enough this man Elton John dares to speak forth my holy words and twist them and say that Jesus Christ out of the gospels is gay world for this abomination you shall drink of the boiling black Blood plague. Get ready, world. I, Yahweh, speak forth. I have had enough. This disease has been incubating in those who are homosexuals and lesbians. This disease has been waiting for my timing to come forth. You who make excuses for the homosexuals, I have given you time to repent. I'll not tell you the day. I'll not tell you the month. I'll not even tell you the year. This disease will physically manifest. But I'll tell you this now. The boiling blood. Black blood plague has reached the White House. I tell you, none shall escape. How dare anyone say that which I have proclaimed in my holy word is an abomination. Now you dare say, my only begotten son of Yeshua Hamashiach, the perfect slain lamb without a spot, without a blemish of sin, partook of an abomination called homosexuality, a mockery of what I created when I created Adam and Eve. Eve, the Judases are exposed before your very eyes. Yes, those who quote scripture and yet lead so many astray, for they don't even follow the words of scripture. Woe be unto the Judases who say, do not believe the Bible. Do not believe the holy scriptures. Throw away the Torah. It's just written by mere man. Tear the scripture out. Tear out this page. Tear out this chapter. I'll tell you what I'll tear out. I'll tell you what I've torn out, what I've blotted out. It is your names in the Lamb's Book of Life who have done this. I, Yahweh, say, I've had enough. The battle has been raging for so long. Did I not say, in these days before the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, the holy would become more holy and the unholy more unholy? Now they dare call themselves Christian? They say, don't worry about sinning. I guarantee you heaven anyway. And now this reprobate, reprehensible man of lawlessness and of the Antichrist spirit, Elton John, tries to reassure all in the homosexuality community and those who dare call themselves Christians. Don't worry. Jesus Christ was one of you. Homosexuality can't possibly be a sin. For you see, Jesus Christ was sinless. And yet they speak of me and don't even know the holiness of my son, Yahushua. And they speak of my holy scriptures and yet serve Satan with all that is within them. Do you not know, my little ones, my bride of Yeshua HaMashiach? I trust you. I allow Judas to come into your very midst, just as Judas Issachariot was allowed in the midst. Do you not understand? He also had his followers, but I tell you this. As I told you a long time ago, Elizabeth, woe be unto the Judases who would seek to join this ministry. They started out drinking the milk and eating the spiritual meat, and then they betrayed all that they knew was holy. So I forbid you to weep over a Judas, for I do not. The Judases that betray you here on this earth betray all my holy bride, even those dwelling amongst their own households. How many have Judases in their own household? How many are in unequally yoked households? Even those that call themselves mine, they betrayed long ago go in the war with Lucifer in heaven. Do you think I am surprised? Do I not say that I allow the wheat and the tares to grow together? Now I have shown you the tares this day, and I tell you this. I told you to warn the world. It is a breath away from the time of Jacob's trouble, the great 
tribulation. My beloved son, an almighty wind youth minister, you've done a teaching exposing the lies of the devil in regards to the catching away called rapture, and how few want to know the truth. The church of the pretenders would rather believe the lies, live any way they want, sin any way they want. It's just enough to make others be convinced you are a Christian. You don't really have to follow what you write, what you speak. You don't have to be an example of who Yahushua HaMashiach is. It's just enough to pretend. It's just enough to say, Jesus bless you. Woe be unto those Judases who lead my sheep and lambs astray. But you see, my sheep and lambs' names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And they will return again to the Good Shepherd, Yahushua. It may take suffering through the fires of persecution with untold agony in the time of Jacob's trouble, that which is called the Great Tribulation. But my sheep and lambs shall return to me, even if it's with their last breath. Their faith will get hot through the fire of persecution. Beware to those who are lukewarm. I have sent this ministry to speak forth my words to warn you. I anoint my prophet to speak forth my words. And because she is not a man with a long gray beard, you want to dismiss her. You say God can't possibly speak out of the mouth of this mere woman. You don't want to hear. You show your foolishness. You show what itching ears you have. The real reason you hate this ministry is because of the conviction. You don't want to be told that lukewarm Christians will go to hell and are no Christians at all and that you're doing wrong and when you don't obey the Ten Commandments you just want to say Jesus Christ paid the price for me at Calvary yes Yahushua HaMashiach paid the price for you at Calvary but what price have you paid for him is it too much really to ask you to obey when you are truly born again and filled with the Ruach HaKodesh Holy Spirit you no longer have an excuse to sin for you have the Rakh HaKodesh within that convicts you when you sin. You will truly desire to obey I, Yahweh, with every word I say. Oh, so many say the same salvation prayer and boast and say, I believe in Jesus. But how few follow what they claim to believe. You hate any ministry or any person that convicts you of your sins. Lightness and darkness cannot go together. With my own hand, my word has has spoken it forth. Yahushua HaMashiach came with a dividing sword. Matthew 10, 34. With my own words it has been spoken forth. And what is your response? Those who do not want to give up your unequally yoked household so they will not betray you in the great tribulation. Your response is brander a false prophet. Rip those words out of the Bible. Ignore them. Block them out. That's your answer. Lead others astray. Nothing has changed. The same spirit of a Pharisee that stoned my holy ones. Yahushua's bride. They live their lives each day to be pleasing unto me. They don't claim to be perfect. And when they accidentally offend me, they quickly repent with tears in their eyes and they say, oh please help me not to do this sin again. There are many kinds of sin. Even this prophet that I speak for this message now struggles with this sin of procrastination. How many of you stumble on this one? You know what to do, but you do it in your time. Oh, you know what I want you to do. And I'm not speaking of the Ten Commandments now. It can be something so small, but you don't do it. There are many kinds of sin. No one is perfect. Everyone is a work in progress. But I tell you this, when it's time to get Yahushua's bride, it will be when your heavenly graves are at the highest. When each day you strive to obey me in every way. When you make your bodies living sacrifices. When you know the first Torah law the first commandment thou shalt have no other gods before me and not for the sake of a spouse or a loved one will you break it even if it means the end of your marriage you realize nobody comes before Yahweh Yahushua and the Ruach HaKodesh the strongest and most blessed marriages will be those that keep the first commandment and both of them will be out of balance in their love and obedience for Yahushua they will both love Yahushua more than each other or anyone 
else. Yahushua is a lover of their life, soul, and spirit. And when I speak out of balance, isn't that what it should be when you love Yahushua above all else? You are on this earth for such a short time. This is just one breath in your life. We are talking about eternity in heaven. Oh, beloved bride of mine, beloved bride of Yahushua HaMashiach, listen to me. Let nothing be more important than the one who causes your heart to beat, the one who breathes life through you. Oh, beloved one, no one, no one can love you like I, Yahweh, do. Does the one that you call your loved one, your spouse, know the numbers of hair on your head? Oh, beloved. Beloved, do not allow I, Yahweh, and Yahushua to become last on your lips. Oh, you lukewarm, puke Christians, the one Yahushua will spew forth as vomit out of his mouth. This is why your love has waxed cold. You put so many other loves before us, your worldly lust, fleshly desires above us. Yes, even those that call themselves mine and dare to call yourself Christians. And you wonder why you no longer can discern the truth from the lies? But you stone the holy in this ministry, speaking forth, just as surely as Stephen was stoned. I speak to the puke, lukewarm Christians. You do not have to remain puke and vomit. It is your choice. I sent this ministry and other ministries and individuals who are part of the Holy Bride of Yeshua HaMashiach to warn you. I sent this Elijah of New, and I don't care whether you like to hear this or not, but I use my Elijah of New to birth this ministry forth, and that started in America and is now all over the world to warn, rebuke, and encourage. I not only speak forth blessings, but I, Yahweh, speak forth curses. Enough is enough. I will not apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. This world has become a Sodom and Gomorrah in my eyes. Shame on you. Shame on you who do not defend the holy ones who speak forth these mornings. So my beloved ones this day, the fate of a Judas is death and hell. You will see Judases come and go. Woe be unto those that follow the Judas for yours shall be the same fate. Woe be unto anyone that says taking communion in remembrance of what my son Yahushua paid, given his body and blood for their sins is cannibalism or vampirism. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is blasphemy and the ultimate mockery of Yahushua's sacrifice. Since when? Since when? When you pray that you become one with Yahushua's mind, body, spirit, and soul, and ask forgiveness of your sins, and his blood washes you clean. Since when? When is this evil? Who would dare to say such a lie? Who would dare believe such a lie? The Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit is not within them. You have head knowledge and not heart knowledge. Communion is important and is a weapon against the enemy. To you who say communion is not important, Yahushua's last words as he sat with his disciples were, This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Since when is that a sin? Who but Satan would say such a thing. Who would dare say such a thing? This is the ultimate insult, for you have mocked my son's blood. You have called evil what I called perfect. This is the ultimate insult. And then you liars try to lead my prophet astray that I speak forth from and tell others this lie. Communion is the ultimate weapon against Satan. And you have called this communion evil. And that which I have has spoken forth as good evil. As surely as you have blasphemy, not only Yahushua HaMashiach, and not only I, Yahweh and Yahweh, who sent my only son to give his body and blood for you, you have insulted the Ruach HaKodesh. You have blasphemed all three. I told you. I warned you. Beware of the time evil is spoken of as good and good is spoken of as evil. I always send my prophets to speak my words. The Holy Scripture were not spoken forth by man. It is no different than me speaking forth out of this vessel of clay 
Yahweh's mouth now. It is I, Yahweh, that put those words in this mouth to write. The pure words were corrupted by various transcribers and translators. I warn you, do not rely only on the King James Version of the Bible. For King James burns in hell. He took out books and words which he didn't want to include, just as surely as they're doing today, and saying these scriptures and Torah laws apply no more. This does not line up with my idea of who God is. He is not supposed to curse. He sent his only begotten son to pay the price at Calvary to suffer and die in my place. So now I can do anything I want. It doesn't matter to God anymore. He doesn't care what I do because he sent his only begotten son to pay the price. The law was nailed on the cross so I can do anything I want. The fourth commandment, I say, any day will be the Sabbath. Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach said, He is the Lord of the Sabbath. It no longer matters because they threw that day away. Liars, liars, liars. Do you think I would waste my time to take my own finger and inscribe on a tablet of stone and give it to Moses and defend the Israelites and command them to honor me on the Sabbath day by resting? By resting? Not by working, but by resting? Liars! You who claim that you are a Christian and put up these videos about why Christians no longer have to worry about the Sabbath. It doesn't matter what day. It doesn't matter that the Roman Catholic Church changed it. Liars! If you do not repent, you shall find yourself in a lake of fire. I'm not going to play games. The Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, is almost upon you. The time of lamenting and weeping of great suffering more than this world has ever known. What do you think keeps hell burning? The flames only grow hotter. It is I, I, Yahweh's wrath, rage, and fury. I want my bride home. I want Yahushua's bride home. His bride is my bride. I want them home. I look upon this sewer called Earth. Dung is everywhere, and I see little sparkles in the dung of those who are the bride of Yeshua HaMashiach, and all the holy here and there. It is though they are buried under the dung, and oh, how much dung! So much stench is in the feces, and that which calls themselves the Christian churches. Judgment, judgment, judgment has come to that which you call the house of the Lord. When the Ichabod Christian Christian churches stopped preaching against sin, such as abortion, fornication, and same-sex marriages, when you allow sin behind the pulpit, when you let homosexuals preach behind the pulpit and brag about their sin, when you stopped rebuking the sinners, Ichabod was put on your doors, and my Ruach HaKodesh Holy Spirit was taken out. You sing your songs and you gather on Sunday, and yet I am not there. Oh, some of my people are there, but my true presence, my Ruach HaKodesh anointing, it's not welcome there. You use your emotions and you get yourself all hyped up with songs, but my true prophets are not allowed to speak. We are not allowed there. When I say we, I mean the very presence of Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Rock HaKadosh. Our presence is not there. Otherwise, they would all fall on their faces. They'll repent for America, but will they warn others of the sin they're in? It is a mockery. Do you want to know why the power of the anointing is not as a first church? Look and behold what I see. The stench is more than I, Yahweh, can bear. The heathen look at these so-called Christians and say, There's no difference between you and me. Elton John says, There's no difference between you and me. I can rewrite the scriptures too. People say, Throw out the fourth commandment. So I say, Jesus Christ is gay. It's no different. But you see, I raised up this ministry who refuses to compromise with sin. The elephant in the tub, almighty wind, rock a kadesh, wildfire ministry. My almighty wind ministry is a mighty rushing wind going through the world and Satan cannot stop it. So he gets everyone focused on a mere woman, Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya. Those who know and love her can tell the difference between her 
and when I, Yahweh, speak forth. But it isn't a mere woman speaking forth. I am Yahweh, and I tell you this ministry is calling forth the true bride of Yahshua HaMashiach to come forth because you need one another. All of you are being attacked. You are like a wounded animal licking your own wounds because you cannot trust anyone. So I, Yahweh, put this group together, and I use this vessel speaking forth to birth it into the physical realm. Yahweh, I, Yahweh, had already birthed it in the spiritual realm, and it is a use to us demon stompers, the holy prayer warriors. You will see Judas's come and go. It is their choice. I told you, not everyone is fit to be the bride of Yeshua HaMashiach. Only those that remain loyal to the end. You will know who the bride is. Oh, my darling ones, I forbid you to weep another tear over another Judas. I forbid you to weep. Instead, look at all the apostles and true followers of Yahushua who refuse to conform with sin. The church of the pretenders refuse to put I, Yahweh, and Yahushua and the precious Rehach HaKadosh first. And you are surrounded by the pretenders and they will have the fate of a Judas. It was already written down. A Judas is the ultimate contamination. You see, this Judas did not want to keep this contamination of telling the ministry on prophet that doing communion is of the devil like cannibalism and vampirism like leprosy to themselves no they reached out to defile and contaminate the holy bride Yahushua's demon stompers even this holy one speaking for us to lead them to the antichrist the Judases will always do this they do not want to keep the contamination to themselves they want to share it so weep no more for the Judases this is a somber message do you think Yahushua took pleasure on the day he exposed who Judas was. But you see, beloved ones, I will only allow a Judas to stay hidden for so long. Look around the world. Some have put their faith in their jobs. Some love their jobs more than I, Yahweh. Some put their faith in finances, and they're seeing their financial empires crumble before their eyes. Some put their faith in spouses, and I am revealing things you'd rather not see. I am dividing, and I will continue continue to divide anyone who contaminates my bride. I test you. Who do you love more? That heathen spouse? Those who claim they are equally yoked and yet when one of the spouses will say, I must have more of your attention, who will you prove that you love more? So many that desire to be the bride of Yahushua are in these households. I am testing. The trials of your faith are more precious than gold. This is your trial. Who do you love more? For those not married, you weep and mourn and say, I must have a mate. Who do you love more? You do not know what you ask. That is why I said I will not join unequally yoked marriages in these end times. You can make all the excuses you want. The marriages I join together, they equally love me, work for me, obey my spirit, and not their flesh. Those who are not married and weep and mourn, you do not know the blessings I give you. You do not know what you ask. I repeat, that is why I said I will not join unequally yoked marriages in these end times. The marriages I join together are holy. Those who are not married and weep and mourn, you do not know the blessings I give you. You do not have to be concerned, pleasing anyone but I, Yahweh. In the end, none of my bride will be unequally yoked. I shall repeat, Yahushua HaMashiach will use the dividing sword. And before this bride is taken off of this earth, if they are unequally yoked, Yahushua will divide. I will not allow my bride to be contaminated. It was only for a set time. For lightness and darkness cannot go together. This is a war. Yahushua fights for his bride. And the enemy me cannot win. I put light with light, and the light only becomes brighter. It is not a struggle. Together when you put Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Ruach HaKodesh first in your life and your love, did I not warn? Your worst enemies will be in your own household. I warn again now, those who do not want to be divided, those who love their spouse more than I, Yahweh, those that spit my word back in your face and brand you a false prophet, Elizabeth, Know this. These are not your words. These are my words. And it is back 
Lift up in Holy Scriptures. Remember prophecy 111. I had another prophet in Nehemiah literally cursed and pulled the men's beards and slapped them for being unequally yoked. So when the attacks come, and yes they will come, be as a Stephen, holy bride of Yeshua HaMashiach. Keep your eyes focused, not on the boulders that will hit you. Keep your eyes focused on Yahushua. They stone you, but are really stoning Yahushua. And yes, I dare to speak to those who dare call themselves Christians. But I, Yahweh, call you Ichabod Christians. Nehemiah 13.25 And I contended with them and cursed them. And I smote certain of them. And I plucked off their hair and I made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourself. Nehemiah 13.27 Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, transgress against our God and marrying strange wives? So I leave you with these words. I told you, everything that can be shaken will be shaken. I remind you of this in Prophecy 105. I warned you ahead of time what 2010 will be like in Prophecy 116. You must be faith water walkers. I've spoken this day, your Abba Yahweh, the true bride of Yeshua HaMashiach who hears this word, will contact you, will validate this word. They have heard my voice. They will stand by your side. Be loyal and defend. They will no longer care what men and women say. They will defend what they know to be true. Know this also. This prophecy only gives the enemies more reason to hate you. But this is nothing new. Yahushua was and is hated. Can you expect anything less? For you are his reflection on this earth. The ones I call Yahushua Hamashiach's bride. So it has been spoken this day on February 19, 2010, a Sabbath. Spoken under the anointing of the Ruach HaKadosh and given to me, Apostle Elizabeth Sherry Elijah Nicomaya. I offend most, but I am a blessing to others. A child, warrior, bride of Yeshua HaMashiach. And no devil can take that away from me.